Hello everyone. Now let's see a very interesting section and that is section 17. Now in this section what we are going to see is apportionment of credit and blocked credit. Block credit means certain inputs or capital goods on which credit is not allowed at all. Hence it is called as block credit. Okay. So we'll see that whole list under section 17, subsection 5. Very interesting list. And you have to remember this list at least till your exams. That which are the inputs or in uh, capital goods on which credit is not allowed. Okay. Altogether not allowed. And services also. Inputs, services and capital goods. And before we go to that subsection 5, we'll see apportionment of credit. So apportionment is in two situations and that is if you are using any inputs or capital goods or input services partly for business purpose and partly for non-business purpose. Obviously you will not get full credit. So how much credit is to be allowed and how much is to be disallowed. So two things business use, non-business use and secondly even if you are using something for business purpose but your output is partly taxable and partly exempt means your supplies are not 100% taxable they are partly taxable and partly exempt then in that case how much credit you will get and how much you will not get because it's obvious that the inputs which are coming in if they are used both uh, for taxable supplies and exempt supplies then the proportion which is used for exempt supply should not be eligible for input tax credit right so that is given in this section section is simple it says that you have to apportion it and then the real calculations are given in the rules so first we'll see the section which will define what is allowed and what is not allowed how much is allowed and how much is not allowed and then for actual calculation the actual formulas will have to see the rules so both are very interesting Let's start. So section 17 says that subsection 1, of course I have given the questions also so that you can remember that which subsection is for which purpose. Like the first subsection is for goods which are used partly for business and partly for other purposes. So it says that where the goods are service, goods will include inputs as well as capital goods. Okay. or services of course the input services or both are used by the registered person partly for the purpose of business and partly for other purposes the amount of credit shall be restricted to so much of the input tax as is attributable to the purpose of his business obviously very simple line nothing to explain it's quite self-explanatory right or in other words we can say that the part of the inputs which are used for non-business purposes credit will not be allowed on them then second point is what if the goods and services are used partly for affecting taxable supplies and partly for affecting exempt supplies similar lines the inputs or the capital goods or the input services which are used for making taxable supplies credit will be allowed and inputs and capital goods and input services which are used for non-taxable supplies credit will not be allowed simple so that is given there that where the goods and services or both are used by registered person partly for affecting taxable supplies now one interesting point here including zero rated supplies now taxable supplies include zero rated supplies what are zero rated supplies zero rated supplies are those where the input tax credit is allowed even though the output supply is exempt those are called a zero rated so here let me take some time to tell you what is the difference between exempt supplies and zero rated supplies okay so here is the supplier and here is his inputs capital goods 
and services which are all ITC paid now uh, I mean to say GST paid suppose GST is 200 so they come in to the supplier and then he's making the supplies so if his supply is exempt so supply means exempt means the tax is zero so if the tax is zero because they are exempted you will not get the input tax credit of that 200 rupees reason the reason is simple why do we allow credit we allow credit so that it can be set off against the tax payable on output supply so that it doesn't result in double taxation so the whole concept of itc is to stop double taxation when will double taxation happen when the output is also taxable and the inputs are also taxable if both are taxable then there is double taxation so then we allow itc and we set off right but if the output is exempt there is no tax on output will you take credit of the inputs and if you take credit of inputs then you will set it off against some other things some other supplies which may be taxable so that is wrong that is wrong so if output is exempt then there will be no itc on inputs also no credit no set off means the burden the burden of this tax will fall upon the supplier the burden fixes on the supplier or in other words you cannot pass on the tax burden to the next uh, recipient because in itc what happens is that burden passes on so here the burden fixes upon the supplier it cannot be passed on further because his output is exempt from gst right so that is a normal exempt supply no itc is allowed but in case of zero rated what happens if here is a supplier his supply is exempt zero rated are notified supplies like supply to SEZ unit is called a zero rated so in that what happens is that not only the output is exempt but whatever taxes are paid on inputs is also refunded to you means whatever burden has come up till now that will also be refunded to you so how the refund is given government says okay take itc take input tax credit of this 200 and even though this supply is exempt so you cannot set it off but you will be making some other supplies this particular supply is exempt but you may be making other supplies now which are taxable so in that case you can use this itc towards that tax means you can take refund it is as good as a refund i am setting off this amount against some other tax that i am going to pay like for example if you buy my dvd or the pen drive and you say that Faruka, i want the refund because uh, due to any reason whatever the reason may be i would say okay don't take refund i'll give you a credit note and then you can use this credit note to buy any other product from my website so when you are using that credit note for some other product means that amount is utilized there whatever refund i have to give you is utilized by purchasing some other product on the website right so same thing happens here means ultimately this itc will be used by you towards some other tax payment or if not usable then you can even claim refund it will be refunded so these are zero rated called as zero rated supply so in case of zero rated supply it's a typical it's a special kind of exemption where not only the output is exempt but whatever tax has been paid on inputs up till now is also exempted it will be refunded to you in the form of itc taken and utilized or if not utilizable then refunded understood so therefore 
ITC will be allowed on inputs if your output supply is a zero rated supply. So for all purposes, we'll we'll uh, we will what we can say uh, regard this supply as if it is a taxable supply for the purpose of claiming ITC. So it will be taken as if that it is a taxable supply so that the ITC can be allowed. So therefore, if you read this point again, taxable supplies including zero rated supplies. So this is for claiming ITC. So for allowing ITC on inputs, these exempted supplies which are zero rated, though they are exempted, they will be considered as good as taxable supplies. Okay. Understood? Very good. So it says that uh, if you are using, I'll read the whole sentence again, where the goods and services of both are used by the registered person partly for affecting taxable supplies including zero rated under the Act or under the IGST Act and partly for affecting exempt supplies, partly for exempt supplies under this Acts. The amount of credit shall be restricted to so much of the input tax as is attributable to the said taxable supplies including zero rated supplies. Simple. Means whatever inputs are being used for making exempt supplies, credit will not be allowed. Simple. And the value of exempt supply under subsection 2 shall be such as may be prescribed. So we will see the rules for this. They define the value. What is the value of exempt supply? And shall include supplies on which the recipient is liable to pay tax on reverse charge basis. Interesting point. If I am making some supply which is covered under RCM, reverse charge mechanism, then I am not going to pay tax. Though they are taxable goods, and services but I am not liable to pay tax the supplier is not liable to pay tax right so for me it will be considered as exempt supply okay for me it is considered as exempt supply on reverse charge basis then transaction in securities if I am also undertaking transaction in securities because they are not covered by GST law so they will be considered as exempt supply sale of land because GST is not leviable on land and subject to clause B of para 5 of schedule 2 sale of building. Sale of building is also not taxable now except this clause B of para 5 which is called as construction service which we have discussed many times before that is sale before completion certificate or occupation. Right? So then it is called as construction service and it is made taxable. So if it is made taxable then it is a different story. Otherwise these things will be considered as exempt supplies. Sale of land, sale of building, transaction securities and RCM. These will be included in the uh, turnover of exempt supplies. And for the purpose of this subsection, the expression value of exempt supply shall not include the value of activities or transactions specified in Schedule 2, that is not supply, uh, except those specified in Para 5 of the said schedule, that is chairperson or a member or director of a body established under central state government or local authority. Now what this means is that we had seen Schedule 3. Schedule 3 means a negative list where tax is not imposable. So here it says value of exempt supply shall not include because they are considered as non leviable goods and services. Here we are talking about exempt. Exempt means which are taxable but government has removed the tax on them. So that is of no use actually speaking. This is a technical explanation. Then ITC to banks. For banks, there is a special uh, special formula, and that is uh, 
Now see, in case of banks, what happens is that whatever services they render, part of it is taxable and part of it is exempt. Whatever loans and advances they give for which the consideration is in interest or discount, that is exempt. So bank's income by way of interest and discount on bill discounting and all is exempt. But the other charges that the banks impose like uh, whatever charges, loan charges and commission and other things, penalties that they charge are taxable. They are chargeable with GST, right? Means out of bank's total revenue, some amount is exempt, some amount is taxable. So in that case, bank's inputs will not be entitled for 100% credit. So then how much credit to be allowed and how much to be disallowed? Let's see. So it's a, it's a banking company, all the banks, private public banks, financial institutions, including non-banking financial companies, NBFCs, engaged in supplying service by way of accepting deposits. So this is their exempt service accepting deposits extending loans or advances which is exempt actually because the revenue is interest interest is not taxable shall have the option they have option to either comply with the provisions of subsection 2 subsection 2 will lead to rule which gives the formula so we'll see the formula how to divide on value basis or avail every month an amount equal to 50% of the eligible input tax credit on inputs, capital goods and input services in that month and the rest shall lapse. So instead of finding out the value of taxable supplies and value of exempt supplies and then segregating the input tax in that proportion, which is very cumbersome as we will see in the rule to follow in the next lecture, we will see the rule uh, and it's quite not quite but a little complicated you have to do a lot of calculations there so to avoid those calculations banks are given an option to take 50 percent and forget 50 percent simplest option 50 percent credit allowed 50 percent credit disallowed and provided that once uh, the option once exercised shall not be withdrawn during the remaining part of the financial year so if banks take the simple option of 50% credit, then they will follow it throughout the year. So whatever inputs they receive, they will take 50% credit and 50% will be disallowed. For every input, for every input services and for every capital goods that they purchase. And provided further that the restriction of 50% shall not apply to the tax paid on supplies made by one registered person to another registered person having the same pan. Now this is interesting. What this says? This says that here is a bank, say for example HDFC. So this is HDFC uh, Mumbai branch. Okay then there must be HDFC Delhi branch also okay so if we talk about HDFC Delhi branch whatever inputs they purchase from outside whatever input services they receive from outside and whatever capital goods they buy from outside okay they have option two options option 2 option 1 is actual basis means we'll see how much is the turnover of our uh, exam services and what is the turnover of taxable services and then divide this input credit in that proportion that is in proportion of turnover though you may ask me sir where is it written turnover that is written in the rules that I am going to teach you in the next lecture. So proportion of turnover of exempt and taxable supplies or option 2 is 
the ad hoc this is called an ad hoc option means without logic 50% credit simple 50% credit you take 50% and leave 50% okay so this is option 2 which is given under subsection 4 174 okay now the point is that if hdfc mumbai branch gives some service to hdfc delhi branch that is two register uh, registrations having same pan number okay so these are distinct entities hdfc mumbai and hdfc delhi and as we have seen that if one distinct entity gives any kind of service or supplies to another distinct entity it is considered as a normal taxable supply so if tax is imposed here of say 2000 rupees by mumbai branch for any kind of supply that they give to delhi branch how much credit will be allowed will we take 50% in this case also no so for this inter branch it will be full credit full itc even in the second option like in this option also 50% option full 2000 credit will be allowed but when we buy from outside the option is of 50% but if it is inter transfer then it is 100% okay good <clears throat> then come back so that was subsection 4 option to banks and financial institutions and non banking financial companies then coming to subsection 5 the most interesting one this is called as block credit <clears throat> this is called as blocked credit that is certain goods and services on which credit is not allowed altogether <coughs> <coughs> so it says <coughs> notwithstanding anything contained in subsection 1 of 16 16 allows you credit but this says notwithstanding so 175 overrides section 16 and 18 also that we'll see after this input tax credit shall not be available in respect of following input tax credit shall not be available at all of the following namely number a motor vehicles now we'll read this very slowly and we'll read it by imagination okay so you have to visualize all these assets in your mind so that you will remember it for a long period of time that if this is the asset then no credit is allowed okay so visualize the items also and the conditions also so first is motor vehicle motor vehicle can you imagine what are you imagining a truck or a bus or a car or oh. wait first we'll read the characteristics of that motor vehicle then you imagine okay not before that so motor vehicle for transport of persons so we are not talking about trucks here we are talking about maybe a, a, a car or a bus also because it is also for transport of persons so right now you can imagine both but let's see further motor vehicles for transport of persons okay having approved seating capacity of not more than 13 persons including the driver means we are talking about less than or equal to 13 persons only so which motor vehicles we are talking about we are talking about small cars having five seater capacity or suvs having seven capacity then those small uh, mini buses mini bus will also come having 10 capacity 12 capacity that winger winger is there having 12 13 capacity so up to 13 Okay, we'll take all motor vehicles which are small, medium, which have capacity of up to thirteen, including driver, including driver. 
so it can be 12 plus 1 normally it is represented like that 12 plus 1 1 is for driver and 12 passengers so maximum is 12 plus 1 means total 30 so we are talking about such type of vehicle so you can imagine small motor cars uh, maruti wagon r or all those small cars uh, hyundai honda uh, hyundai honda chevrolet this that ford everything will come all the small cars which we normally use except when so what it says motor vehicles no credit means if you are buying a car even for your business like Faruka I just bought a BMW for my business I use it but I will not get any credit hence I am not going to buy BMW that was just an example why because no credit is allowed now and there is a huge amount of tax also so if I buy a BMW tomorrow there is a huge amount of tax on that and I am not going to get credit so why to buy such cars don't buy <laughs> okay so motor vehicles not entitled for credit except when they are used for making the following taxable supplies means if I am using a car for my taxable supply which is a CA service or a tuition class service I am not going to get credit even if I use it for making taxable supplies I will not get credit but if I use a motor car for giving these three services which are taxable then I will get credit so here ITC allowed if you are doing any kind of these businesses means you are giving any kind of these three services as your output service and they are taxable important is they should be taxable then you will get credit of motor car which are these three number one further supply of such motor vehicle means you are a dealer you are a dealer of car so you are a dealer you have taken dealership of Honda cars in your city so you buy the cars from the company and you sell it to people the public so if you are a dealer then you will get credit number two you are using it for transportation of passengers you are using it for transport of passengers so transport of passengers is your business means you are running it as a taxi or as a tour operator you are a tour operator so you are using the cars in your business of transport of passengers all those tourist companies uh, which normally have a different number plate different color I think yellow yellow and black okay so those cars which are registered as taxi cars uh, run by taxi operators tour operators they are entitled to take credit or number three imparting training on driving such motor vehicles means you are a car driving school yeah car driving school you must have seen a lot of those car driving schools in every city there are multiple car driving schools uh, just nearby to our office there is a Vazalwar car driving school and they have got a lot of cars which they use to impart training driving training to the probable drivers okay young drivers I don't know what they teach because they drive very rough these days but anyways so three persons are entitled dealer taxi and tour operators and car driving schools they are entitled for taking credit on motor cars understood so that's the first one but Farooq Haq using it using a car for his uh, coaching class or using car for any other business not entitled to take credit so I'm thinking of starting a tour company right so we'll start tour company we will become tour operators and we'll buy a lot of cars and then some of them will be used personally also <laughs> then I'll get credit good or I'll start the car driving school 
what do I have to do? I come in the morning to my office, then the whole day I'm in the office only. And in the evening or late evening, I go back to home. So what I'll do, I'll appoint a person and he will use the car during the whole day for car driving training. Then I'll get the credit. So you can think about it. Okay, let's move. Second is double A. Vessels and aircrafts. Vessels means ships and aircrafts. Okay. So imagine vessels and aircrafts. Wow. Vessels and aircrafts. Indigo Airlines and a lot of aircrafts are there. You can personally have an aircraft also. Except when. So except means again credit is allowed. So normally on ships and aircrafts, no credit. Except when they are used for the following purposes. So these are again those purposes where ITC is allowed. So what are these cases? Number one, for making following taxable supplies, namely further supply of such vessel or aircraft means against dealers. So you are not a consumer, you are a dealer. You will buy ships and aircrafts and you will further supply. Or transportation of passengers means uh, again for shipping company, I don't know what they're called as passenger ships. You are doing business, so you run your ships from Bombay, Goa or any other place. Your business is transportation. And for airlines, uh, for aircraft, they are called as airlines, yeah. So all the airlines like Indigo, Spicejet and uh, Truejet and a lot of companies are there. Jet has of course gone down now. Indian Airlines is in the process of going down. But whatever. So the aircrafts that they purchase, they can avail the credit. Or imparting training on navigation or it should be imparting training on navigation such navigating such vessels means ship training. Ship training is there. And imparting training on flying such aircraft. So there are those uh, flying schools. We have one in Nagpur, but that is shut for quite some time now. Nagpur flying school, flying club is there. So whatever aircrafts they purchase for giving training to people on flying, they are entitled to take credit. So same thing, either you are a dealer or you are using it for transport of passengers or you are imparting training. And secondly, for transportation of goods, for transportation of goods. So in case the vessels or aircrafts are used for transportation of goods, like cargo planes, cargo ships and planes, like uh, big uh, companies like Blue, Blue Dart, uh, the DHL, DHL companies there. So they have got their own aircrafts for international cargo. So they use the aircraft for transportation of goods. And a lot of companies have got their cargo planes. So they are used in transportation of goods. Those planes will be entitled for credit, right? So cargo ships and planes. Then next one, so you, you could imagine clause double A. Now one difference I will tell you, then in case of motor vehicles, the clause A, they had said for transportation of persons is disallowed. Motor vehicles for transport of persons is only disallowed. What about a motor vehicle for transport of goods? That is not disallowed. So all the trucks that you buy, trucks and lorries and all, they are never disallowed. They are allowed. They are entitled for credit. But when they said vessels and aircraft, they did not say for transport of passengers only. They said vessels and aircraft. So vessels and aircraft become both for transport of passengers and goods both. So therefore they had given the exception of goods. So if they are used for transport of goods, then credit is allowed. Then next is AB. Services of general insurance, servicing, repair and maintenance, three kinds of services are given general insurance, servicing and repair and maintenance. In so far as they relate to motor vehicle vessels or aircraft, 
covered by A or double A. Now simple. See, if Farooq Haq buys a motor car for running in his business, will I get credit? No. If I buy the motor car, I am not getting credit. So, what about the general insurance? I have to insure my car also. Then from time to time, I have to get it serviced. And if anything happens to it, then I will need repair and maintenance. So will these services be entitled for credit? Answer is no. If motor car itself is not entitled for credit, then these three services in relation to that motor car will also not be allowed as credit. Understood? Similarly for vessels, similarly for aircraft. If Farooq Haq buys an aircraft today, personal plane, I deserve it. I go to so many places for teaching, so I need to buy my own plane. So if I tomorrow buy my own plane, <laughs> then will I get credit? No, because I am not using it for transportation. It's my personal plane. I will not get credit. Then what about servicing? What about repair and maintenance and insurance of that plane? No credit. But if I am using a plane, for transport of passengers, for transport of goods like Indigo. Indigo Airlines buys planes, credit is allowed. If those planes are serviced, repaired, maintained and insurance is taken, credit will also be allowed. Understood? Can you link the two? It's very simple. Similarly, for a shipping company which is into uh, cargo ship, the ship itself is entitled for credit and the repair, maintenance, servicing and insurance will also be entitled for credit. Okay. So then it is given provided that the input tax credit in respect of such services shall be available where the motor vehicles, vessels or aircrafts referred to under A or AA are used for the purposes specified therein. As I told you, for so these purposes means that if you are a dealer or you are a school, running a school for training people on running these vehicles. So then credit will be allowed. Secondly, where, serve, uh, where received by a taxable person engaged in manufacture of such motor vehicles, vessels or aircraft. So if you are a manufacturer of vessels, vehicles or aircraft, will you get credit of repair and maintenance? Yes. Servicing, yes. Insurance, yes. Manufacturers will get the credit. Like for example, I'll, I'll take an example of a car manufacturer like Honda Motors. So Honda, when they have manufactured the cars and those cars are lying with them in stock, these days uh, the car sales are down by 20-30%. So a lot of companies are having very huge stockpile of manufactured cars as your finished product. So they are lying in those go-downs and warehouses and open areas. But there is a risk, risk of fire and all. So any company would obviously insure its stock in trade. So Honda Motors have also insured their cars, own cars as stock in trade. So will they get credit of the insurance means the tax paid on insurance premium? Answer is yes, they will get it. So manufacturers are entitled for credit, basically of insurance, not of servicing because they are just manufactured cars, they don't need any service. But yes, insurance, they will be allowed. Or in supply of general insurance service, in respect of such motor vehicles, vessels or aircraft insured by him. General insurance means for example, national insurance company, national insurance company. There are so many insurance companies, right? So what happens here is that if national insurance has insured a few motor cars of public, if those motor cars get damaged, they will go for repairs with the authorized service centers. Who will pay the bill of this repair and maintenance? The insurance company because the car is insured. So insurance company has to pay the bill of repairs and maintenance of the cars. Which cars? Which they have insured. So what about the tax which is charged 
in these invoices of repairs and maintenance will the national insurance company get credit of the same yes yes so that is why they are also given here so if the company is there insurance company and if the cars are getting damaged and they pay the bill for repair and maintenance of these cars they are entitled to take credit right so as far as these three services are concerned general insurance servicing and repair and maintenance people of these abc category and these abcd and this two they are entitled for credit apart from them manufacturer and insurance company these two people are also entitled for credit of these three services insurance servicing repair and maintenance right very good then comes b next is b following supply of goods or services or both number 1 food and beverages food and beverages you must not be knowing but my office expenditure i have got 25 people working under me and uh, every day they call something or the other from office expense of course some day they call some roshagullas or this or that a lot of food and beverages come in my office and of course we have got catering for the whole staff member for the lunch and the catering order we have given to taj so every day uh, the lunch boxes come for all my employees and also my articles working under me from taj and if they wait till late night then dinner also comes from there so we pay approximately 2000 rupees per box per day and this is our uh, common service that we provide to our employees nothing big about it but the question is question is not that uh, what kind of food i am providing to my employees question is that when i buy this food and beverages and i do catering get catering done basically will i get credit no no credit is allowed even though this is a business expenditure in income tax this all expense will be allowed to me as a business expense because i am doing it for my staff but as far as gst credit is concerned no credit how sad but anyways it's given so food and beverages outdoor catering now you will say what about indoor catering indoor catering is covered here food and beverages so food and beverages if they say food and beverages obviously no credit if i get it catered by somebody still no credit beauty treatment <laughs> again see i have to tell you all the facts so we have got a lot of girls as employees and this is another service which we provide them every month i give them an allowance of 5000 rupees per month for the saloon expenses no credit allowed then health services no credit cosmetics and plastic surgery no credit if we provide to our employees no credit leasing renting or hiring of motor vehicles vessels or aircraft now again motor vehicles has come again so but what is this uh, leasing renting or hiring of motor vehicles or vessels or aircraft no credit so as i told you in clause a we saw that if we buy a motor vehicle if i buy a motor car i will not get credit what if i take it on lease if i don't buy i take it on lease and i pay lease rent so there will be gst on lease rent will i get credit of that answer is no but if a school driving a car driving school buys a car will they get credit yes if they take a car on lease will they get credit yes so if motor car by itself is allowed to us credit as a capital goods then lease of it 
will also be allowed as credit but if motor car itself is not allowable then the lease will also not be allowable understood so it says leasing renting and hiring of motor vehicles vessels or aircrafts referred to in clause a or double a except when used for the purposes specified therein except when used for the purposes specified therein so like a dealer if a dealer dealer of course doesn't lease but your school people uh, people who are running school driving school can lease a motor car so they will get credit for the same right or a transport company transport company may purchase a car or they may lease a car in both sense they will get the credit the next is life insurance and health insurance life insurance no credit so whatever premium you pay on life insurance there is gst on the premium also but no credit like i have got a lot of policies i am insured for 50 crores and my policy premium every year runs into crores of rupees and there is a huge amount of gst paid on them will i get credit no similarly health insurance farooq ak has got his health insured for crores of rupees premium goes into crores of rupees gst goes into lakhs of rupees no credit so health insurance provided that now there is a proviso which says that the input tax credit in respect of such goods or services both shall be available shall be available where an inward supply of such goods or services or both is used by a registered person for making an outward taxable supply of the same category underline same category of goods or services both or as an element of a taxable composite or mixed supply so let's take examples like food and beverage so i said food and beverage is not allowed as credit so if farooq who is running an academy and has got a lot of employees sitting here in my office if i buy food and beverages for myself or my employees i will not get any credit because my output service is not of the same category as food and beverage right so no credit but what about a restaurant what about a person who buys food and sells food like a kirana shop will kirana shop which is buying and selling food items get credit yes yes they will get credit similarly outdoor catering if there is a caterer if there is a caterer himself joke caterers and they have taken service of om caterers and then they are giving output service to clients so clients will pay to jog and jog will pay to om so whatever bill is given by om to jog will he get credit yes so if one caterer gives service to another caterer the recipient will get credit but when the re recipient caterer will give service to public the public will not get credit understood similarly beauty treatment similarly health services cosmetic plastic surgery however cosmetic and plastic surgery cannot be uh, cannot cannot be given 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 i mean to say a giving to b and b giving to c that cannot happen uh, there are no b2b transactions but yes in food and in outdoor there can be b2b so basically what this says is that if they are giving the same category of output supply this becomes b2b so if it's a b2b transaction then credit is allowed but if it is a b2c then credit is not allowed but in case of plastic surgery there cannot be a b2b like a doing plastic surgery on b and b doing plastic surgery on c <laughs> so then if it if it's b2b then yes so you can write down here b2b b2b so in b2b transactions credit is allowed but the point is that the output should be the same category or a mixed or composite category okay so mixed or composite uh, i'll give you an example like food and beverages if i am a hall provider i provide marriage halls and in marriage halls i give you not only the hall but also the food and this food i take from one of the caterers 
So when caterer will make an invoice on me, I will get credit. My output is not food by itself, it's a mixed supply of food or you can say composite supply of food and haul, right? So still okay, I will get credit of food items purchased. Hmm. See, you, you, you just cannot remember the words, right? You have to imagine. Unless you imagine, you will not get anything, you will not understand anything and you will make mistakes in the exam. So though I am giving you a few examples, but after this lecture, you revise this at least five times. Think more and more and more, frame more and more examples. Think about new uh, practical things and try to remember. Okay. Great. The next is membership of a club, health or fitness center. If I take membership of a club, a lot of clubs are there these days or health and fitness center like a gym. So if Faruka goes to a gym, takes membership of a gym, uh, you must not be aware, but I go to gym also, not for bodybuilding, but for fitness. So I do a lot of cardio and all. I keep fit. I don't eat that protein bars and all, no bulk, only lean body, fit body. So I go to gym. Now I pay to gym, will I get credit? No. Similarly, club membership, no credit. And travel benefits extended to employees on vacation, such as leave or home travel concession. If we give travel benefits to our employees, which I give, I send my articles and my employees every year to different countries. Every year we have about 15 days tour for all my articles and my other employees so this year we are going to Europe Switzerland and Austria last year we went to New Zealand year before we went to UK and Scotland and Ireland so it goes on so we have got the plans so all my articles they go free of cost of course but this is on vacation it can be a office vacation or it can be anything I can give them money for their own personal vacations okay so any travel benefit like travel tickets and all which I buy for my office staff, I will not get credit if it's a vacation. But if it's a business use, if it's a business purpose, then credit is allowed. So what I do is I don't call it as vacation. All of you know that we take audits in different countries. I've got audits from across 70 countries. So we take audit. And I send my employees my articles on audit work. So when I send my employees and my articles on audit work, they are for business, they are traveling for business purpose, then I will get credit of the tax paid on airline tickets and their hotel stays and everything. But hotel stays are in foreign, so it becomes a foreign GST, then of course that will not be allowed as credit. But if it is Indian GST, then yes, we'll get credit. Okay. Then provided that the input tax credit in respect of such goods or services or both shall be available where it is obligatory for an employer to provide the same to its employees under any law for the timing in force. So this is for the full clause B that if these services 1, 2 and 3, B1, B2, B3 b1 b2 b3 are given to employees under any law requirement then we will be entitled for credit okay obligatory under any law for the timing in force though i haven't seen any such law but if it is there then yes so you have to just look in the exam carefully when the question will come so if they say that these are obligatory requirements expenses are obligatory then credit is allowed okay good the next is c and d now c and d are to be read together c and d are to be read together and before we read it let me give an example let's imagine 
and then we'll come to read. So we'll understand. We'll understand first and then read. Okay. What CND says that here is a businessman. Okay. Who wants to construct a building for his business use? Okay, like I'm Farooq. I want to construct a big office premises. Okay, I need around six thousand square feet of office premise for all my employees and managers and all. So I want a building. Now what I do is I can do uh, means I can get this building in various ways. Number one is you just purchase a commercial space in a building. So first is purchase space in a building which is already existing. These days a lot of malls are there, commercial constructions are there. We can just buy out a space, 6,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet and so on and so forth. So if I purchase a commercial space, will there be a GST on that? No, if it's an already constructed building sold by one person to another, there is no question of GST. So no GST, no credit. Obviously, no GST, no credit. It's already constructed now. So then there is no question. Second is, there is a construction company. Now I, the businessman, will purchase a land, piece of land, and appoint a construction company to construct a building for me. So I'll appoint a construction company to construct a building and give it to me. Okay. So what I'll do is the businessman himself buys the material. So the businessman. Uh, let's talk, uh, give a name to this businessman, Farooq Haq, the biggest businessman in India. <laughs> of course, it's it's good to dream now. Nah? It's good to dream. Okay, so FH and you know, Farooq Haq buys the building material. So what kind of building material will buy? Cement, steel, sand, bricks and uh, whatever need we need to construct a building. We'll buy the materials and then construction company will give us the service of construction. So there will be GST on building material and there will be GST on the service. Will I get credit? Answer is no. No ITC for the service, no ITC for the building material nothing thirdly there is a work contractor work contractor means who will buy the building material etc everything he'll do and he will give me the constructed building okay so work contractor now work contract we have discussed some time back if you don't remember i'll tell you again in the normal construction and work contract, what is the difference? In normal construction, I, the client, will buy the building material and all, and the construction company will only give the service of construction, nothing else. But in work contract, the contractor himself will bring all the goods, all the building material, etc., etc., and he will give me a composite deal. He will give me constructed area. So we have fixed the rate as 2000 rupees per square feet. So I am going to give him 2000 rupees per square feet of construction. It is his job to buy the cement and steel and etc etc and he will pay to the labor and he will incur all the other expenses. He will give me a constructed fully finished properly finished building. Okay. So this becomes our contract. So he will make me a big amount Suppose the contract is 2000 rupees per square feet and total area is 5000 square feet. So total bill is going to be how much? 5000 into 2000 means 1 crore. So on this 1 crore he will impose GST. Will I get credit? No. No ITC. 
so are you understanding the point is that if a businessman wants to use a building for his business purpose whatever way he buys that building whether he buys it ready made or he buys it in a scheme a construction scheme which is yet to finish then there is a gst in that we have seen earlier before it is uh, before the completion certificate if it is sold there is a gst still no credit so whatever way i purchase whether i construct it myself or i get it done through a contractor or i purchase it from a builder i will not get any credit whatsoever understood no credit is allowed but if these construction companies or the work contractor appoints another work contractor a sub work contractor okay he appoints a sub contractor to do some work on the construction and this sub work contractor charges a gst of say 100 rupees will the main contractor get credit yes so if it's b2b then credit is allowed but b2c no credit okay understood because this work contractor will then charge gst here on his output service of say 300 so he'll set off this 100 year and pay 200 to the government but this 300 will not be allowed as credit to the user of the building understood great so now let's read those two points so c is work contract and d is the actual construction where we construct ourselves So it says work contract service when supplied for construction of immovable property, construction of immovable property, other than plant and machinery. To so underline plant and machinery, and just write down allowed. So if I appoint a work contractor for constructing plant and machinery, then credit is allowed. Okay, but if I am appointing a work contractor to construct a building, then not allowed. So first they say immovable property, but if this is building, then no credit. But if that immovable property is plant and machinery, plant and machinery can also become immovable. Like a big construction is going on, we are constructing the furnace and lot of machineries, and I have appointed a work contractor to do so. Then I will get credit for machineries and plants. I will get credit, but for other immovable property means building. no credit except where it is input service for further supply of work contract service so this is wc to wc work contractor to another work contractor then credit is allowed okay so that is the first point secondly d point goods or services or both received by a taxable person for construction of an immovable property again other than plant and machinery so this is where i am myself constructing a building so whatever goods i purchase cement steel angle iron and so on and so forth no credit will be allowed or whatever services i receive services can be construction service given by a construction company no credit so for cement steel as well as construction no credit on his own account so construction on his own account including when such goods or services or both are used in the furtherance of business even though it is in furtherance of business i will not get credit means i said now that i am using the building for my business purpose still no credit Hmm. Explanation says that for the purpose of C and D, the expression construction includes reconstruction, renovation, additions or alterations or repairs to the extent of capitalization underlying capitalization to the said immovable property. So what this means that when I construct my original building, I will not get any credit. 
Later on, if I have to do some repairs, maintenance, reconstruction, renovation, alteration to those buildings, to the old building, then we have to see whether that expense is revenue in nature or capital in nature. If it is capital in nature, means alterations are capital in nature, then I will not get credit on them. But if they are revenue in nature, then we will get credit. So this is important. Huh? To the extent of capitalization, it is disallowed. Now, how will you understand whether it is capital or revenue? So you have to see where it is accounted for. If these expenses on reconstruction, renovation, addition, alteration are directly added to the value of that asset, means if they are debited to building account, capital asset account, then the credit will not be allowed of the inputs that we use. But if it is a revenue expense debited to PNL, then credit is allowed. So this is the point to remember because in the question which will come in the exam, they will write these things. Repairs to a building cost 20 lakhs debited to PNL. So if it is given debited to PNL and the GST amount would also be given to you. 30,000, 40,000 GST is there. So we will take credit. If the expense is debited to PNL, then GST credit will be allowed. But if the expense is debited to the asset account, means it is capitalized, then credit is not allowed. Okay. So if it's a minor repair and debited to PNL, credit allowed. If it's a major repair, having long term benefits and taken to capital account, then credit not allowed. So this is an important point. So here you can take a note if debited to PNL, then ITC allowed. Okay. <sighs> So those are two related points C and D. Then E is goods or services of both on which tax has been paid under section 10 that is composition scheme. And this we have discussed earlier also. If the supplier pays tax under composition scheme then we as recipients will not get credit. And similar is the case when notification number 2 by 19 apply the concessional rate up to 50 lakhs no credit will be allowed to the recipient. Then goods or services are both received by a non-resident taxable person, received by a non-resident taxable person except goods imported by him. So if there is an, an RTP and in India he buys some local goods and services, no credit is allowed to him. But if he has imported some goods into India and paid that uh, integrated tax, on imported goods, then that credit will be allowed. Then goods and services uh, both used for personal consumption, obviously. If you are buying something for personal consumption, no credit, obviously. So this, this specs I bought some days back, you know what is the cost of the specs? Looks very simple but the, it costed me a bomb that person charged me 30,000 rupees just for the lenses frames are old I gave him my frame an old frame and got the new glasses made huge amount and there is an amount of GST also involved there will I get credit? no because this is for personal consumption right? So anything which is used for personal consumption or personal effects, no credit. The next is goods lost, stolen, destroyed, written off or disposed of by way of gift or free samples. This is also a very important point from exam point of view. Question will include one of these at least. So if I have bought some raw material and they are lost, no credit or stolen or destroyed or written off in the books because they become uh, bad in quality or they get expired or whatever 
and I write them off or I dispose them off by way of gift or free samples, no credit will be allowed. Okay, even for gifts, like uh, my output is like uh, what? What do we sell? Uh, we sell cakes. No, not cakes. Uh, we sell television sets, and we are gifting a speaker system. So a lot of speakers I have bought from the market, of course with GST, and I'm not going to sell them. I'm going to give them free of cost with my television sets. So there's a scheme, Diwali scheme. We are gifting free uh, this thing, speakers. So will we have to pay tax on, uh, or can I take credit on speakers? The answer is no. You cannot take credit or GST paid on speakers because they are meant for free supply, free gifting, and you are not going to charge any money on that. So therefore, no credit. Or even when used to give free samples. The reason is simple, there is no double taxation. As there is no double taxation, there will be no credit on inputs. Because if the inputs are lost, they are destroyed, then you are not going to use them for your output supply. Na? So therefore, no credit. And lastly, any tax paid in accordance with provisions of section 74, 129, 130. These are penalty provisions. Penal liability arises. 74 is violation of law. If you have understated the tax and then you are required to pay additional tax when you are caught because of fraud and so on and so forth. So then you means the supplier are caught. Can you pass on that amount to me, the recipient and can I take credit? The answer is no. So this is a long list of blocked credits. Okay. Then subsection 6 says that the government may prescribe the manner in which the credit referred to under subsection 1 and 2 may be attributed. Means the ratios of business and non-business use or taxable supply, non-taxable supply will be prescribed by the government. So that they have done in the rules which we are going to study in the next lecture. And then there is an explanation which says that plant and machinery as we saw that uh, any any inputs which are used to construct plant and machinery are entitled for credit right so it says plant and machinery means apparatus equipment and machinery fixed to earth by foundation or structural support that are used for making outward taxable supplies okay outward supply of goods and services of both and includes such foundation and structural support so plant and machinery includes the foundation also though foundation is a civil work but that will be included in plant and machinery means you are entitled for credit so if i buy cement and steel and sand and bricks to make foundation for machineries then credit is allowed and structural support means here is a long standing machine and we need to construct a wall to support this because it will be bolted to this wall the machinery will be bolted there so it is a structural support this is this is the wall and this is the machine which will be attached to that wall so while constructing this structural support i will get credit whatever machine whatever things are used cement steel bricks i will get the credit but excludes excludes land building or any other civil structure the factory building by itself is not a structural support okay so factory building will not be entitled for credit similarly telecommunication towers all those telecom towers you see in the city for antennas that is not allowed it is not machinery and pipelines laid outside the factory premises if pipelines are inside factory premises then they are part of plant and machinery but if they are outside your factory premises like for bringing crude oil or other supplies then not entitled so inside allowed outside not allowed so that is section 17 quite a long one and quite a deep one so we'll stop the lecture here and you read this at least five times slowly by imagination okay 
I've given you a lot of examples, but while you study on your own, you make more imaginations, more examples. Okay, great. So you do that first and then we'll go to the rule in the next lecture and see the actual division formulas.